scanning for audio. Welcome to a Tin Dog Podcast. This time I'll be talking about the Blake 7 box set. This is the first one from Big Finish. Now Blake 7 itself is a truly marvellous TV show. I've been asked by a few emails what I think about the returning Star Trek Stroke Doctor Who crossover. I've had some theories about this and I've said them in the past but bear with me. Don't, don't stop bearing with me. For me, Blake 7 is the anti-Star Trek. I mean, it's even on the screen. The logo is the same Starfleet badge, but tipped on its side. The universe as seen through a twisted Star Trek, where Star Trek and Starfleet were never quite as upfront and as marvellous as they made out. It was from a world akin to Doctor Who, Hell, the aliens turning up at the end of the first, or was it second series? They were supposed to be the Daleks invading. That would have been a hell of a storyline. It would have been Dalek Empire. That's not what we got. But there are so many parallels that fit in with Doctor Who. Not only the background music, and yes, many of the actors reappear, which makes things slightly worse and harder to understand. So let's look at it this way. There's going to be a Star Trek and Doctor Who crossover that Star Trek The Next Generation and Doctor Who reboot, 11th Doctor, appearing together. Now I'm always against that sort of thing. For one thing, it was actually mentioned in the writer's Bible of the Virgin books. Just don't even think about it. And that's fine by me. So let's imagine a universe pre and post 11th Doctor reboot. In the 11th Doctor reboot, the universe itself is glossier, better imagined, has nicer effects. This is the universe of Star Trek The Next Generation. The original Doctor Who, pre-reboot, that federation looked much more like Blake 7. This is a random thought that occurred to me about 5 o'clock in the morning. I really should learn to switch my fan head off. It's not important. What is important is that Big Finish have released this box set. I'm getting back on topic. Please bear with me. As I said earlier, I love Blake 7. This box set consists of three stories. Now, they don't own the license to do lovely full cast audios. That is something I would just have loved. I can't see that state of things lasting because they are so good and have the original cast involved that they really should be full cast. Get hold of the people who've got the other license, come to an agreement, sort it out and just get on with producing something even better than this. In saying that, these are pretty damn good. There are three stories here. The first one's called The Turing Test. Now this one sort of revolves around Avon. There's a handful of extra cast. But that really shouldn't distract you from the main show. Paul Darrow was born to play Avon. I will justify that statement forever. His voice is superb. Why he hasn't been snapped up by somebody at Ardman or in Disney in order to produce the voice for some animated villain is beyond me. The guy's voice is superb. And I've met him at conventions and he's a great, great guy. Very interesting, very human. And I would love to read his biography at some point. This story leaps from the audio. Yes, it's a glorified reading, but it doesn't feel like it. The sound effects are the same. The characters are as in-depth, if not more in-depth, than as seen on TV. They are darker, and this story set perfectly in the first series, like the others, of Blake 7. 
The story itself is to do with um, a potential android life form and Avon pretending to be an android together with Villa trying to con some scientists. I don't really want to go into any more depth than that because it would spoil the whole storyline. But it feels so much like old-fashioned Blake 7 as to be, well, surprising. With other big finishes, we've had Colin Baker's Doctor go on to evolve and become better. The same with the 8th Doctor, and the same with the 7th. But their Doctor Who's, with Blake 7, we've got something really perfectly pitched at the time it's set. It is 1978 again. Hell, while listening, you almost expect power cuts. That's not important, and if you're outside the UK, also that means meaningless. The second story, Solitary, has got Michael Keating at the centre. This is Villa, the man who I, well, based my entire life on. A clever coward. Again, it is difficult to talk about the specifics of the story without giving away the larger thing. Several in-jokes are made about factories all looking the same in space, so much so that you agree and go, completely that is Blake Seven. Mentions of various other crew members are marvellously well done, but not worth going into. No, this is Michael Keating's chance to shine, and good lord he manages it. The last story is the weakest of the three. That's not to say it is bad by any stretch of the imagination. Counterfeit is a complex plot, but unlike the other two, there are scenes in Counterfeit where the narrative takes place outside the immediate experience of the main reader. It jars slightly. It surprises you how much it does, but that's perfectly acceptable. The weak point for this, sadly, is the reading by Gareth Thomas. He was Rog Blake 35 years ago. We've seen him in Torchwood, and that's fine. People do get older, we can forgive them. But I'm just not sure that he was able to step back into Rog Blake's shoes quite as well. In saying that, it could just be that he had a cold. You just don't know. So yes, I want more of these, and I would recommend you get them too. They're a great, great experience well worth listening to, and a worthy addition to any Blake 7 collection. There will be more books, more audios. I hope the female cast will be served better, because if these are anything to go by, they will be having some great stories. In May, there's a Blake 7 book due out. I, for one, can't wait. So I'll fade away and get on with reviewing something else. So until next time, be seeing you. You have been listening to the Tin Dog Podcast. Doctor Who and its associated shows are all trademark of the BBC. No infringement is intended. Contact us at tin-dog at hotmail.co.uk.